Okay, guys, so uh, we're going to talk about solution saturation today, uh, which relates to solubility or how much can dissolve um, in a solution. So remember, we define that solubility is a measure of how much solute can dissolve. And so there's not an infinite amount. We will reach the point where no more can hold, and we're talking about solution saturation at that point. And so um, let's just dive right into it with our three definitions and then we'll just do some examples. So an unsaturated solution, it's a solution that contains less than the maximum amount, amount of dissolved solute. So the word saturation just really means full. And so if we're unsaturated, we're not full. And so you contain, the key uh, word here is that we contain less than the maximum amount of dissolved solute. We can put more solute into the solution and that extra solute would dissolve if we are unsaturated. Um, the next one is saturated, which means that we contain the maximum amount of dissolved solute. So that's our key phrase right there. We contain the maximum amount of dissolved solute. Um, exactly. Now, this is a point of confusion at times. Um, that doesn't mean that there's no more than the maximum in the solution. There actually usually is more than the maximum in, this, in, the, in the container, but that extra is undissolved. It's sitting at the bottom. Uh, and I'll explain it a little bit when we get to the examples. Um, but the most that can dissolve is dissolved. That's saturated. And then our last one would be a supersaturated solution. And supersaturated solutions contain um, more and then the maximum amount of, and this is key right here, dissolved solute. So more than can dissolve is dissolved. And I'll talk a little bit about how you get to that point. But it must be dissolved. That is the difference between a saturated and a supersaturated. In this solution, we contain the maximum dissolved, and there may be some undissolved extra. In a supersaturated solution, the extra that would be undissolved naturally is actually dissolved. And so that is the difference between a supersaturated and saturated solution. So let's get into um, just examples of how it works. And so we're just going to keep it real simple, real basic. And so here's a beaker. And this beaker has some quantity of water in it. And we've got some compound that contains um, you know, positive and negative ions. So let's just say that's our compound. Um, and just for the sake of ease, let's just keep this really, really simple and say that the solubility, let's just say that this is you know, you know, one milliliter. It doesn't really matter. We're just making up these numbers that there's one milliliter here. And let's say that the solubility of whatever this compound here is, is four atoms per milliliter, which is not how we really define solubility, but, but you understand from what we talked about in class. And if I put these this four atoms in here, well actually let's say let's do this. Let's say I didn't put four. Let's say that I put two atoms in there. Well then what I would have is I would have a beaker and I would have two dissociated, let's say we have a positive and negative two dissociated atoms and what I have in my mixture is I have two atoms per milliliter. So if my solubility is four atoms per milliliter and this solution has two atoms per milliliter, would it be unsaturated, would it be saturated, or would it be super saturated? Well it would be unsaturated because it contains less than the maximum amount. The maximum amount it can hold is four. It contains less than the maximum amount of dissolved solute. It contains two. So that would be an example of an unsaturated solution. So let's look at um, a saturated uh, situation. So we'll go with the same example. Our solution, our solubility is four atoms per milliliter. And let's say this time I've got a situation where I've got a, a um, crystal that contains four atoms uh, of our positives and negatives, whatever this substance may be. 
and I've still got my one milliliter of water here, and I put that in there. Well, what will happen is I will get um, all four of those ions will dissociate one from the other. They'll spread out, be surrounded by water molecules, if you remember. Um, I'm not going to draw all of them, but there's just a couple of water molecules surrounding them. Um, and they're dissociated. Well, in this case, how many atoms are dissolved in our water? Well, we have four atoms dissolved in our water. And so um, in this case, we, can, we do contain the maximum. There are four atoms dissolved, and that is what the solubility is defined as in our little example here. And so in this case, um, the solution would said to be saturated. Now, let's say that I took this solution and I had another crystal um, of the same compound, positive and negatives, and say this was four again, and I dumped that in there. Well, what would happen? Uh, in that case, would those four extra crystals dissolve or would they not dissolve? Well, hopefully, you're going to say, well, they won't dissolve because no more can dissolve. So the situation that we would have there is we would have our undissolved crystal sitting at the bottom and our original four atoms would be um, dissociated uh, plus uh, maybe the plus over here maybe the other negative right there and they're free to move around um, and we would have our four dissolved so we have four dissolved atoms and we have four um, undissolved and so how would you describe the solution well hopefully you would describe this solution as saturated it is no different than this solution up here both of these solutions are saturated why well both of them are saturated because they contain four dissolved atoms and the definition of saturated solutions are solutions that contain the maximum amount of dissolved, keyword being dissolved atoms. And the maximum amount is four. And so both of these are saturated. This one is saturated because it contains exactly the right amount, four dissolved. This one's saturated because it contains more, but only four will dissolve. And four will remain uh, combined in the ionic uh, crystal. Now again, we, I think we talked about this in class. These crystals can swap out places, but overall we're going to have four dissolved and four in the crystal in this dynamic equilibrium between the dissociated and the uh, combined form of the compound. All right, last case is the supersaturated solution. And so let's, let's say we take that last case we just had. So we have this beaker that contains its hundred milliliter or its milliliter of water and there are the four uh, dissolved ions in it and then at the bottom we have the four um, atoms or ions that are still combined into their crystal lattice now how do we get pluses and minus in there how do we make these dissolve so remember the solubility is four atoms per milliliter is our little made-up solubility here now, one thing that I haven't mentioned uh, yet is that solubility is dependent upon temperature. Uh, if you change the temperature, you change the solubility. And so let's just, we'll just say, usually we do solubility at around 20 or 25 degrees. So let's say that this is at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's the solubility if the, if the solution is at 25 degrees. If we increase the temperature, so let's say we increase the temperature to 75 degrees Celsius. Well, the solubility changes. Maybe the solubility goes to um, 11 atoms per milliliter. And I'm just making these numbers up. They're not really important. It's just the fact that as we increase the temperature, the solubility increases. All right, so let's take this beaker and let's heat it. And let's heat it to 75 degrees. So we heat this beaker, oops, sorry go that way. We heat this beaker uh, to 75 degrees 
and at 75 degrees Celsius, we can dissolve 11 atoms. Well, how many atoms are in this beaker? Well, if you can count, you should say that there are eight atoms in that beaker. And so at 75 degrees, since we can dissolve eight, I'm sorry, since we can dissolve 11, all eight of these ions should dissociate and go into solution. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Need two more, seven and eight. So they're all dissolved. Because we increase the temperature, we increase the solubility to seven atoms per milliliter. Now, here's an important point. How would you describe this solution? Hopefully, you would describe this solution not as uh, supersaturated and not even as saturated because now the saturation point, if you will, is 11 atoms, and we have yet to reach it. We only have eight atoms in here dissolved. And so this solution, upon heating over here, the solution is saturated. It contains four... Uh, dissolved atoms, one, two, three, four dissolved atoms, and that is the solubility, four. Over here, uh, we contain eight dissolved atoms, but we sh could contain potentially 11. So the solution went from saturated to unsaturated because it doesn't contain the maximum amount possible. We could actually put some more of this compound in here and they would dissolve, but we could put three more in there and it would dissolve. But here's the kicker. We take that solution, and if we cool it back down, cool to 25 degrees Celsius, what could happen, and what is what potentially happens a lot of times, sometimes it doesn't, but it depends on the compound, depends on what the compound you have here is, uh, what could happen is the eight particles will remain dissolved. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. So now we're at 25 degrees. And what is the solubility at 25 degrees? The solubility at 25 degrees is four atoms. Four atoms per milliliter. How many atoms are dissolved in here? Well, since they all remain separate, we have 11 atoms dissolved. I'm sorry, not 11, eight. We have eight atoms per milliliter. Well, the and, and the key here is that they are they are still dissolved. They did not recrystallize into this little structure here. They stayed dissolved. Um, and so we actually have more atoms dissolved than are theoretically possible, which is four. There are eight dissolved, and at 25 degrees, you should only be able to dissolve four. That makes this solution super saturated because more are dissolved than is possible to dissolve. Now, the only way to get to a super saturated solution is to undergo a heat cool process. Um, so we heat it and then we cool it back down. We heat it to get the undissolved solute to dissolve and then we cool it back down to bring the solubility down from 11 in this case 11 back down to 4 um, and that sorry about that we bring the solubility back down from 11 down to 4 and in that case what happens is this the solubility reduces itself below the point where we are dissolved we have 8 dissolved and it comes down below that 8 so it becomes super saturated um, so how do you know if a solution is saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? There's a couple little tests you can do, so let's talk about that real quick, and that's where we'll end up with today. And so you've got a, um, a beaker, and let's say that, you know, remember, you can't see this stuff um, a lot of times. So you've got a beaker, you've got some, you threw some sugar or some salt in there, um, and it all dissolved. So are we saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated um, is the question. Well, if it all dissolved, if you don't see any solid down here, it's a pretty safe bet that you are unsaturated. Now, if you got another beaker and you see crystals down here at the bottom, say you got some sugar or some salt crystals that just sit down here at the bottom, that's a pretty safe bet that you are um, saturated because the reason why there are crystals down here that won't dissolve is because you 
already reached the point of solubility. You've got more atoms in here, and inside dissolved in here are a whole bunch of those crystals that are already dissolved, and no more can dissolve. So you don't see anything, could be unsaturated. You see something definitely saturated, but here's the thing. If you have a super saturated solution, it is going to look just like an unsaturated solution. And so um, these two, to you, are going to look the same. So how do you know if you have an unsaturated or a super saturated solution? Well, there's a real easy test. That easy test is uh, to drop some crystal into the mixture. If you have an unsaturated solution and you drop some more crystal in there, what is that crystal going to do? Hopefully you say that that crystal is going to dissolve because it's unsaturated. It can hold more. So in an unsaturated solution, if you drop some more of that substance into that solution, that substance will disappear, quote unquote disappear, as it dissolves. In a super saturated solution, if you drop a crystal into it, what's going to happen is the extra... I'm going to personify the atom here. The extra atoms that are dissolved that should not be dissolved, so like in the previous example, we had the, the four extra atoms dissolved. Um, they're going to see this crystal, and again, personifying the atom, they're going to say, hey, we're not supposed to be dissolved. We're supposed to look like that. That's what we should look like. And then they will attach themselves. They will un The extra ones that should not be dissolved will... Uh, recrystallize. They'll undissolve themselves, if you will. They'll attach themselves to the crystal that you dropped in there. So even though you drop a crystal in this size, once it sits in there, um, the other atoms that are dissolved, that are that that make it super will attach, and the crystal will actually grow. You'll get a bigger crystal in there than the crystal you dropped on there because the crystal is growing as the extra atoms that are in solution that should not be in solution attach themselves to the crystal uh, and reduce the number of dissolved atoms until it gets below the solubility point. So the, the saturated, easy to see, you have this piece of crystal in the bottom, granules, whatever you have. Unsaturated, you don't see anything because everything's dissolved. Drop another crystal in there and it's going to dissolve as well. Super saturated, you don't see anything because it's all dissolved. But if you drop a what's called a seed crystal, what do seeds do? Seeds grow. You drop that seed crystal in there that grows as the extra atoms attach to it. And we're gonna I'm gonna show you in class um, a, a cool demonstration that show that you see a seed crystal growing, um, and you'll enjoy that. So those are your kind of some three uh, some little how do I know what it looks like? Um, 